Hello friend, welcome to this video and thanks for being here watching. So this video I'd like to talk about spirit guides, spirit helpers, non-physical friends. So in our spiritual life, in our spiritual work, we need guidance. And another video I spoke about teachers and masters, master teacher, you know, finding the master teacher. The best master teacher that you can have is a guide that will guide you in the non-physical realities to assist you in your physical life for your for your spiritual path how to find these they're with you already just like all the knowledge of the universe is within you everything you need to know is is within you already because we are the spark of all that is god if you want to call it i don't like to use the word god but the creator the all is i don't believe is in one place beyond beyond the highest realms. There might be a, a small aspect of, of that, all there is. But I believe as the Big Bang exploded into the universe, so did the creator aspects of it, sparks of itself, went off into, into the never regions of the universe and created souls. And I think souls, we're all part of a bigger, if, if all of our energies came together, then we would create perhaps God, you know, we'll be so powerful, we'll know everything. Um, but I think all of us are individually on our own path, experiencing life in many different ways. Um, there's a movie out there, I've forgotten the name of it, but where you have spirit, like a spirit animal following you, uh, you're familiar. I can't remember the name of the movie, you probably know what I'm talking about, if not, don't worry. Um, but they are beings that only the person can see and they're like being playful and showing paths and things. Now your spirit guide or guardian angel, your spirit helper, whatever it is that you, you, you know of, we're not on our path alone. There are times when you feel so much alone is because you're used to your own energy. You're used to them being around so much. It's like having a plant in the room, you know, you can feel its energy, perhaps, when you first brought it, like, oh, that feels really nice, but you have it in your room, in your, like a house plant, and you get so used to it, you don't realise it's a living thing in your room. Um, and it is alive, you know, plants do have feelings, they, ha you know, they grow. And to know this, you can see it when you're driving through a country lane and you have all those tree branches hanging up. They only grow a certain amount, you have this box-like, structure where traffic trucks will go through and they'll create this perfect square because they don't get cut that way the tree just knows to avoid that area and will grow beyond so trees have feelings and not being all hippie and and fluffy and spiritual like oh you know we have to love the trees and they have feelings yeah you know some people like to ask permission before having a cutting or cutting a, a tree down or or pruning a tree in the day you're not killing it you're just it's like you know perhaps the the limbs and branches and leaves is like no different than cutting your hair you know imagine if we felt pain if we had our hair cut that would be horrible i don't think uh trees and bushes feel the same they, they'll definitely feel it more so if you cut it all the way down you know from the bottom of the trunk and completely kill the tree that's when you kill it but when you're just trimming or taking cuttings I don't think you're really hurting that anyway moving on I'm I'm diverting again um, it's what I do um, so yeah spirit guides how to tune into those now they are with you all the time and when you need them um, but more so in meditation and when you're sat uh, doing something creative um, so they are with you not all the time but when you assist I know they're not with us when we are eating, when we're having a shower, when we're um, working out, when we are cooking, well, not so much cooking, but when we're doing something, you know, our, our mundane thing. I'm aware in retreats and workshops that the energy completely changes. For example, when I'm in retreats and workshops and circles, I'm aware that the room is flooded with a more, with more energy. So these energies are our spirit guides, our helpers, assisting us in the progress, in the process. And um, 
it's always interesting when we come to eat together because I always feel like, oh, is, are we missing somebody? Because the energy feels a little bit less because, you know, our guides know that, oh, we're, we're busy eating right now, so they have a break or they go and do something else. They go assist or have a break from helping us. It takes a lot of their energy too to connect with us and depends what you do. Now, everyone has a spirit guide. Everyone has a spirit helper. Not everyone listens to their guidance or what's given to them. Um, especially in the spiritual world, we have a lot of helpers in our life who will help us, who will assist us. And um, if you're doing something spiritually, like spirit readings, tarot, you're holding a, a ceremony. I don't really like the word ceremony because it, it puts a different energy to it. But um, if you're doing a meditation or hosting a meditation retreat or you're doing platform mediumship or you're giving talks on non-physical states, uh, intuition, then your guides are there assisting you and giving you information to, to speak. And with that becomes other abilities too, intuitive and you give messages and, and everything. And mediums, for example, they are the medium, they are the, the middle of of this life and the afterlife so you know a medium is called that because they are in the middle of both the physical and the non-physical realms so they're able to be the the mediator the, the communicator for example but not you know everyone has psychic abilities everyone has the ability to be a medium and be psychic some people are just gifted straight away um, with these abilities because it's perhaps their path but there's you know everyone can learn to tune in but it depends on the motivation if you don't have a desire to do that you won't progress because you're like oh, I've got no interest or you don't believe um, it's not a race everyone's there in their own journey but along the journey we are given um, spirit helpers in order to assist us in in the process so if you are a a cook a chef for example and um, you're trying to create up new new ideas, new new dishes, and so you, you might have a change of spirit guides or spirit helpers that come in to help you assist with cooking, you know, you might feel, I mean, a good thing to know is that your, your spirit guide might be a person that is something that you feel very drawn to, so let's take, for example, Italian or Spanish cooking. You might feel really drawn to Spain and or Italy and you love the, the foods there, you love the dishes and you feel this big connection because perhaps your guide is of that origin and so they're going to influence more Spanish or Italian dishes. Um, you might like cats and really uh, drawn to Egypt and you might have an Egyptian guide because you're getting that influence. But they've come into your life to assist you in, in what you do. So then that's when people have like Egyptian healing, they call it that because it is, it's from, but they have no idea. Um, gardening, um, floristry, um, growing flowers or working the land, you know, people might work with a spirit guide or a helper that assists them because they have that knowledge already and they might because they have that knowledge, they have the energy to intuitively push you to do something that you didn't know what to do. And there might be times when you're doing something creative or doing a hobby and you're like, oh, I did that. I didn't know why I did that, but I just felt guided to. And that's following your intuition, your, you know, because when you work with a spirit guide or a spirit helper, they're influencing your, your help. So for me, my current path right now, I'm growing a lot of... Um, a lot of fruit trees. I just got this big passion to get get fruit trees put on the land. Now it wasn't until I started speaking to the owner in the next field that she used to come into the land on the retreat and she used to pick apples off the tree. But then the last owner, he had cut a lot of the trees down. So she said, it's not like it was years ago. So I said, oh, I felt this really big intuitive pull to start you know, planting more trees. Um, at a retreat recently, um, I had one of the people give me a message about um, it seemed like somebody who was Amish who was coming in who 
loved working in with the land and and so I've had these different ideas and influences maybe it's from them because I guess I'm downloading or channeling information from somewhere and it might be a guide of mine who's now working with me to assist in the land because that's their passion and so you know when you're asking for help you're not doing it you're not putting it out there to, to speak to spirit but you're you're wanting guidance you're like oh you you have this desire and you don't know why and so you're getting the, this information come through you might be doing things you have no idea um, so having a relationship with your with your spirit helper your spirit guide or guide angel whatever you want to call them um, your non-physical friend is building up a connection and communicate with them you do that in meditation but also in the activity that you are doing so if you especially like painters um, people who paint or draw when you're doing something physically you're allowing your left brain your logical brain to take over but then it's distracted and so your intuitive creative um, unanalytical mind comes in and you start being creative and drawing things and you don't know why you're doing it but you're just doing it because they're assisting you too so if you've heard of automatic writing for example if you are a writer if you're writing a book a novel um, especially especially then you might get ideas flooded to you so whatever you are doing in your in your life if it doesn't seem spiritual it probably is you need to follow your intuition and go what feels right when you go with what feels right it's your intuitive intuitive push your your sensitivity of like oh yeah i like that that feels good rather than feeling a resistance like oh i'm not sure so the more you get in tune with your intuition you're connecting with your spirit guide in that process you don't have to be in meditation i said it can be doing something like gardening drawing writing a book you know you're doing something other than that to communicate with them takes many many years of discipline dedication it takes years to have full contact and some people don't even have a, a conversation throughout the time it's usually stuff that's going on in their head they think they're being guided um, and they're not it's, it's our own thinking you know we're very sensitive and in tune so we pick up on energies all the time but you might find that you're being guided for some reason for me my legs take me places I have no idea why I just start walking and I just feel, oh, I'm going to walk down here. I'm just curious. The, the, the energy of curiosity is what takes my legs. And I find that I'm in situations or places that I'm being led to. And it's interesting. It really is. Um, so, yeah, to connect to your spirit guides, it takes time, it takes dedication. Just don't forget that they're there, there. And if you are lonely, it's really hard when you, you know, like I'm trained in mental health. So, when someone has a, having a breakdown, the last thing you want to do is shut your eyes and, you know, you need help. So if you're not getting help um, by your spirit guides because you're too much in your head, too much in your mind, get help by somebody that is living, who has a profession, who, can, you, who you can talk to and have guidance. If it's a friend, open up to them. Don't just start talking to them, saying, hey, I really need some help right now. I need some guidance. I need a friend to talk to. Can you help me? Um, I need an hour of your time. Do you, can you give me that? And or you know, can you help me check in once a week to see how I'm feeling? Um, because the last thing is being on your own. Um, so having physical guides around you is very important. You know, there's only so much information we can get from our spirit guides. They will guide us and direct us with intuition and in dreams. But we don't have that physical guidance by talking throughout the day or in this physical life then it can be very very difficult to um, have any information at all so yeah spirit guides they they exist they're out there they're around us they're probably right next to you right now uh, watching or listening to to this video um, and it's it's difficult I've made connection with my guides but I'm not in always contact the best contact to have with them is sitting in meditation and communicating with them and allowing them to come to you um, but it can take time it can take a long time but the best communication is when you're not actively thinking about them and you're doing something creative you're letting your 
left brain, your analytical mind, your thinking mind to be distracted, to allow the, the non-physical energies to come in and communicate with you. So yeah, take some time. Anyway, I hope this video has helped somewhat. Um, be positive in the process of connecting with your guides, your non-physical friends, and things will manifest beautifully. Hope you've enjoyed this video, um, and I'll speak to you in the next one. For now, goodbye.